Guy Pelé started his career in 1994 at the IBM France on mainframe programming and then decided to switch to our microprocessor like Intel 8080 and Motorola 68800. In 1981, Guy founded DataSud System in France with a branch in Phoenix, Arizona, designing and manufacturing a wide catalog of VME boards. Under Guy's management as the CEO, DataSud grew to 100 person, went public in 86 and was acquired in 88. DataSud was among other products, making one of the very first machine vision systems in competition with Cognex USA. In 89, Guy founded a new company, Neuroptics in Montpellier, France, which started applying software neural networks designed by Leon and Cooper, Brown University, uh, which gave uh, uh, physics uh, Nobel Prize laureate, who started Nestor US as ne neuron storage in Provence. Eventually, Nestor and Neuroptics started a joint venture, Nestor Europe, together with the Salt Aircraft. In 1993, DARPA asked for a neural network chip, and Nestor US won the bid. Guy then team, teamed with IBM Labs in Paris and co patented with IBM the ZISC, Zero Instruction Set Architecture, mainly with Dr. Pascal Tanhoff. Five chips were designed on the disk model from disk 36, 36 neuron to 78, manufactured with IBM user USA until 96, the very first uh, neural chip in the world in 1994. Guy eventually moved to California Bay Area and co-founded General Vision in 1999 with the co-founder Anne Menendez. General Vision designed the Neuroman 1K, 1K neurons in US licensed to Intel Curie and NEPES Korea for NM500. The last occurrence is a license to Taiwan for NM5500 with 5500 neurons in, five, in 55 nanometer coming out of, uh, from TCNC in July this year. The CM1K and NM500 have been produced in thousands and are in cost of blue collar operation like uh, Nordic fishermen. General vision roadmap, roadmap include a patented monolithic image perception device, MIPD, which is planned for next year and will have image learning and recognition inside a four by four image sensor with many applications, including biometrics, toys, toys, pervasive surveillance and automotive. MIPD is planned for, to be commoditized in large uh, uh, volumes. Uh, Guy is also a strong believer of uh, neural network chips, uh, different than uh, the that differentiate from the classic fetch and the code model since uh, many years. So thanks, uh, Guy, for your availability. You are a, a person with a long history and experience. And please uh, tell us about uh, your efforts on on-device learning. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Daniel. So it should be, it should be a benefit to get the uh, hold uh, because you have seen a lot of things, you know. And uh, actually, I left IBM uh, back in 1977. And uh, my boss, when I, I left IBM, told me that it was no future for the microprocessor. I was making a mistake. You know? So it's very interesting. And today... The situation is people said it's no future without microprocessor, which is true, uh, but also there are some other possibilities. So I, I just want to show uh, very quickly because it's a lot of theory in, in, in a neural network, but this is a, a video, uh, okay, uh, where in, in the white, um, uh, in, in the white uh, little square, uh, this is, uh, about uh, 5,000 neuron uh, with a vibroacoustical sensor detecting uh, anomalies into these big machineries. So we won't go through all the video, but it, it show you a real operation since about three years now. And actually this is in Russia and uh, it was installed three years ago and the company who actually installed it 
uh, actually close his operation. Uh, you know, we can see this company. I don't know if you, you see my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Now the video is uh, stopped, but I see your slide. Yes. Okay. So, so right now, uh, this, uh, this this company uh, has a, has stopped uh, the uh, the operation in Russia, by the way. So uh, I'll try to go back to uh, my uh, my video. <clears throat> okay. So let's go to the next step. So here it's uh, give you we we started with IBM actually in 1993. And uh, if you go to Wikipedia, you can see ZISC, uh, which was the name given by IBM, which is Zero Instruction Set Computer, uh, because it does not have any software at all. Uh, it can learn and recognize uh, without software. And uh, one of the reasons is, I don't know if any, any of you try to drive the car, your car, by reading the instruction manual, uh, I, d I, I will advise against it. This is very dangerous. So basically, uh, intelligence is memory, and obviously, it's it's very important uh, to be able to uh, memorize the things. So this uh, this was done by a company in Colorado uh, back in uh, 2011. And again, uh, I don't know if you will be able to. C can you see the video? Mm, not yet. Uh... Okay, let me change uh, the sharing. Well, I think I think it's going to be uh, complicated. So I will uh, I will probably uh, uh, send uh, uh, some more link uh, if people want it uh, because uh, the video uh, out of the uh, presentation are going to be complicated. So uh, this little thing was called Robocite, and it can learn and recognize toys uh, on the framework of Lego uh, without software. Just push button. Uh, also, this thing is called NeuroCar. It can be downloaded. Uh, this is a software simulation, though, but it can be done in hardware. So, as uh, Danilo uh, kindly mentioned, you know, we started uh, uh, back actually in in '93 uh, with IBM with the ZISC, and I IBM made two iterations of the ZISC: a 36 neuron and a 78 neurons. Uh, in 2011, we licensed Intel, and uh, Intel makes the Curie. Uh, the Curie is actually sold, uh, still sold by DF Robot in China. Uh, and the Curie was uh, very few neurons uh, together uh, with an accelerometers, but it was only 128 neurons. I'm, I'm sure that some of you uh, knows about the Curie. It was a great product, but Intel decided to discontinue IoT at this time. And uh, now we, we just get, um, we license NEPES, and you can see the little ear chip, which are 576 neurons. Uh, one of the purpose for us was to actually test um, uh, a chip, which was less than 0 0.5 millimeters thick. Uh, so this was a case to be uh, laminated into glass uh, because we were working with SI glass. And here on the right, uh, you can see the brand new chip from Alpha Plus, uh, uh, Taiwanese licensee. Uh, this chip was uh, released, uh, not released, was, uh, we got the sample two months ago. Uh, and uh, it's very similar to a thousand neuron chip, except that it has 5,500 uh, 5, neurons. So, and it delivers five tera operation equivalent at 200 milliwatts. So you have to, to, to get the uh, processor making five TOPs. Uh, but uh, you have to also make sure it's less than 200 milliwatts. So coming to the technology very quickly, uh, basically one neuron is a memory, uh, in that case, 256 bytes memory uh, with a bunch of logic gets. And um, the neuron are all hanged on the same bus. I'll come back on that. And basically we have uh, obviously real-time learning and real-time recognition uh, without uh, any, any software. Uh, this is why we get the very low power. So this uh, gives you an idea of the architecture here. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, neurons 
uh, we, we have cascaded a lot of neuron. I'll show you a, a bit later. Uh, this uh, uh, single neuron, as you can see, uh, all the hardwired logic inside of the neuron, uh, 256 uh, input, uh, and, uh, and also the memory, and is, is computing the, uh, uh, basically the, uh, the L1 distance and the L sub distance and can make also a KNN, uh, finding the nearest neighbor one versus any, any number. I'll show you after for the US military, we make a configuration with 1 million neurons to find the closest neighbor of one versus 1 million in about uh, five microseconds. So basically, the uh, mapping of the mapping of the of neuron is a L1 distance. So it gives kind of a, a we don't make a, a, a circle because it's take too much um, uh, logic. So L1 is good enough. Uh, what is very very important is the output can be identified or unknown or uncertain. Uh, it's very important to have the idea of unknown. Uh, because if you know everything, uh, you cannot learn. It's very simple, you know. When you go to school, you learn because you detect that it's uh, it's something novel, and that you learn it. Uh, if you don't have this capability of unknown, uh, then you, it's just you cannot learn. So application has been done in uh, uh, different um, uh, things, and and some some applica application has been installed since 1994. Uh, one of the uh, best applications we have done was um, a fish inspection uh, aboard a fishing vessel, uh, which uh, actually the, the, the fishermen are training the neural network uh, just by show and tell on what is a mackerel, what is a herring, what is a good mackerel, what is a good herring. So coming back to the, to the architecture, uh, here also, what is very important is uh, it's uh, explainable and reversible. So you see the contact, you see the, uh, the content of the neuron, and also uh, you can mix inside of the same physical neuron uh, network, you can mix different contexts. We have 127 contexts. So you can have uh, face recognition together with voice recognition, together with vibration recognition, and so on, in the same physical network. Uh, and all the neurons as a daisy chain in, daisy chain out, which when a, learner, uh, a neuron has learned, is telling the, what we call ready to learn neuron, which is the next in line, uh, that it's his turn to learn. So uh, obviously all, all the, the search is parallel and uh, the, the search of, of the inside of the neuron uh, is always a constant number of clock cycle. So if you enter a vector of 256 bytes, you get 256 clock cycle. And the search, the search itself, which is even for 1 million neurons and even more, uh, is, is always uh, 16 clock cycle. So to find one versus 1 million, it will take 16 clock cycle. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we are actually have a, a team working on medical device where instead of running the chip at 40 megahertz, we are running the chip at two kilohertz uh, in order to save energy because it's a wearable uh, which is put against the, the, the leg and to monitor the blood flow uh, in the, uh, in the uh, arteries uh, uh, on, on the, uh, with, with a wearable in the band on the leg. So what is very important is what we call the pillar, pillars of the neuromem technology. Obviously, broadcast mode, you know, when a political uh, guy uh, uh, speak with the crowd, it does not go one by one. You speak to everybody at the same time. You know, uh, look at the internet. Learning and inferencing are combined. This is the same thing. Obviously, the winner takes all is critical. Uh, you need to be able to find the winner uh, in all the crowd uh, in a constant time. Uh, uncertain response is very important. You know, the reason for which I don't know any country uh, which has a traffic light with just green and red. Everybody has an orange light uh, because it's a very dangerous if you go directly from green to red. A lot of accidents. So uncertain is uh, given to the interpretation. 
unknowns, I mentioned before that unknown is very important. Uh, back propagation of error, uh, the error can get the snap on their finger if they make a mistake. Uh, deterministic response, uh, response time, and obviously uh, uh, non, no, no fetch and decode. Uh, I have my grandkids and they are not programmed, you know, no software. And uh, also what's interesting is goes beyond biology is what Neuralink is trying to do right now is to download a, a brain uh, onto the uh, onto a silicon. But uh, for us, it was uh, interesting because our fisherman, for example, uh, can uh, give the training from one boat to another very easily. So this is an application here where we put one million neurons together. Uh, it's it's basically the size of a sweet case. Uh, it was done it was done with um, uh, 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 one 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 million neurons, and it's equivalent to a, a sixty seven tera operation per second at fifteen megahertz. And the purpose was to monitor uh, the uh, network uh, in order to detect uh, abnormal behavior of the um, uh, communication network, especially for uh, drones. So this is an example with the Sony things that we have done, uh, which is a very small uh, uh, training system. And uh, here on the, on the little uh, square where you see a uh, neural mem smart, uh, we have four of the, uh, we have actually, uh, sorry, seven of the NM500. Uh, which can learn and recognize images uh, directly. And uh, with about 4,000 neurons, you can actually learn and recognize many, many things. So this, uh, this was the Intel query, uh, which was top. But uh, as I mentioned, you know, if you go uh, to the F-Robot, uh, they are still selling uh, uh, the uh, query. Uh, they probably get some inventory from Intel, and uh, if you if you click on that, uh, you will find out that uh, uh, we have a library that we call Curie Neurons, and they have made a lot of applications, for example, for teaching how to play tennis or things like that uh, in China. So this is what we call uh, the tiny. Uh, you can see here the neural stamp and the neural tile, uh, which is done with the ST uh, uh, sensors and the ST micro. This is fully compatible with uh, Arduino. Uh, and uh, actually, this is a, a similar one that we are going to use uh, for uh, monitoring the blood flow uh, on the ankle. Uh, and uh, it has a micro SD as well. So. As you know, today it's possible to have two terabytes of micro SD, so you can, you can record the blood flow for a long time. And also, we get a permanent measurement of the blood pressure uh, with, without uh, without uh, uh, any interruption, and without the user know, knowing. Well, the user knows that it has this on the uh, in the socks, you know. But uh, it at, when the blood pressure is measured by what we call PTT pulse, pulse transit time uh, is not like a curve, it's non-invasive. And obviously with the accelerometer, uh, thanks to ST, uh, we know what is the activity at the time of the blood pressure measurement. So this is, um, this is basically was done with the NM500, uh, but, uh, and this is using a OSRAM. Uh, the new one is using a OSRAM uh, it's a very bad name. It's photopletismograph, you know, which actually uh, send infrared and reflect on the hemoglobin of the blood and can uh, monitor the blood flow that way. And permanently, we can detect novelty by learning the blood flow. Typical pathology, which is possible to, uh, uh, to detect are uh, um, uh, seizure, uh, Parkinson attack, uh, also, um, uh, I should um, uh, heart attack before it happens, uh, and this is. Uh, I mean, we we don't invent anything. This is very well documented. What we do is we make it tiny. You know, it's only difference. And the new the new one instead of being NM500 will be a 5500 neurons, 
which will be a BGA seven by seven millimeter. So again, uh, this is a very old thing. Uh, even before the first chip, we put uh, uh, actually uh, 13 year on an FPGA, an Actel FPGA. And this was before we make the first uh, one 10 year on back in 2007. So actually, if you make a search, uh, uh, Actel Microsemi is still showcasing these things. So these are also other application. And uh, if you go to General Vision website, you can see the application. And actually the best place to find all this movie, and again, I don't want to display it because it's complicated, uh, is on the YouTube of General Vision. It's a lot of movies. And uh, for example, this movie here is for sorting, sorting coffee beans. Uh, it's actually using, used in, uh, in uh, uh, Hawaii. So you're welcome to make a trip there. Uh, this is uh, the system here for the fish inspection uh, and, and basically accept and reject the fish. Uh, this, this was installed in 2005 actually uh, with a software version, but no, the system is much smaller. Uh, this is a different application uh, for replacing a PID. So it's a non-vision application is a active adapt adaptive control. And uh, this is a toy. And, and actually we have a discussion with Mattel because my granddaughter uh, wants a Barbie doll to recognize her, uh, but uh, uh, we don't want to take her on the internet. She's too young. Yeah. So, so again, uh, coming back to um, uh, what we, we, we saw, this thing uh, uh, in, in many togors can know uh, as I mentioned, uh, Neurotech.lt uh, uh, is going to shut down this operation in Russia, but uh, is starting to uh, install system in Brazil uh, and very soon in US as well uh, for condition monitoring uh, because he has a system working. And uh, on the side, which is actually similar to condition monitoring uh, on the big things is to detect uh, 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 pulse, transit, pulse transit time uh, using the OSRAM, this is very tiny, uh, using the OSRAM uh, PPG uh, document uh, uh, product. It's about uh, five millimeter by three millimeter, so it's very tiny. So uh, I think uh, is most of what I have to say. Uh, I don't know what, what is the time uh, left, uh, Danilo, but uh, I think um, if anybody has question, I'll be very happy to, to answer. Uh, thanks, uh, Guy. Actually, you are uh, uh, ahead of time, so you you have uh, still uh, some minutes uh, on on your slot. Thanks a lot for your uh, great presentation. I think uh, uh, I was touched by a lot of the content you exposed. Uh, it seems that, uh, at least for what I understood, you have a solution uh, which is. Uh, uh, perfectly fitting uh, the constraints of tiny system in hardware. Uh, from many point of view density, you say the 5K neurons with the five teraops equivalent operation. So the density uh, of operation is amazing uh, uh, that you learn from the unknown, which is a key uh, point uh, um, because yes, Yes, everybody knows, uh, learn from the unknown. Making a tiny system on that, uh, uh, it's, it's outstanding. And the other is that uh, the learning happened with the fixed uh, latency. And, uh, and this is another key property. And, uh, and um, maybe we can derive also requirement uh, from, from what you just uh, presented. There are... Uh, I, 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 if I have a few minutes, I can show uh, real yeah. learning. This is simulation, but yeah. some people have done it uh, with... Um, so can you see the little car? Yeah. Okay, this can be downloaded from uh, General Vision website for free. And uh, you, you can see here... Uh, let me focus on it. So this is an example of what is possible to do with uh, free neurons. Uh, you can you can do that with a real robot. I just bought a little robot for my grandson, so we are going to play that this weekend. You know, 
So I can stop it and we can view the content of the neurons, uh, which is very interesting because uh, if you use the knowledge, uh, you can associate the steering of the car with this image. And uh, this is a vector which is actually entered into the, into the neurons. So uh, just to understand, Guy, this uh, uh, trajectory, initial trajectory, was uh, for letting these uh, three neurons to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to forget everything. Mm -hmm. So no more knowledge. Start so from scratch. We, yeah, so now we, we start. And then immediately the car stops because you don't know what to do next. Okay. So this is a benefit of the unknown. You don't try to guess where to go. You just stop, you know. So I enter, and then you see the number of neurons here is zero. Then it becomes one. OK, then we go. Then it stopped because he never saw this image before. So we will just say, OK, well, just turn. And then you can see that it already generalized. And I can, I can speed it up a little bit. Maybe you can make mistakes still. So here, well, actually, it, it, well, here is going to be a problem. <laughs> so here we can go back and say, okay, when you see that, steer to the right. So you have to reinforce a little bit the learning. So this is what you can achieve by hardware normally. So it's four so, neurons. So, so this, this so Guy, can uh, go on a very tiny FPGA. Yeah. So Guy, another, another key uh, message that you are sharing with this demonstration is that uh, the knowledge is not just uh, training a model but also changing the topology of the model. Because if you pass from one to four neurons, the topology changes. So while yes. you learn, you change also the topology of the network. Yeah, because what you have is uh, we have each neuron as what we call a similarity domain, influence field. And uh, it, uh, this is what we call the uh, kind of back propagation of the error. It actually automatically all the neuron will adjust their uh, influence field uh, in order to avoid making mistakes. So it's not only one neuron. Well, if the neuron is not firing, it won't do anything. If some neuron make it uh, abnormal, uh, no, uh, un unwarranted firing, it will it will actually uh, make. Uh... Okay, so here I go back. So the, the, uh, maybe I, I don't want to exaggerate because uh, I, I don't know many details, obviously, but it seems that you find a way to learn and also to search the optimal architecture, maybe with some uh, limitations, but uh, uh, put together these two concepts definitely is uh, something uh, for a tiny system uh, quite cool. Yeah, actually, it's, uh, the adaptation of the neurons uh, are parallel, is parallel. So basically, every every neuron there is a winner, and everybody everybody or every neuron which is making a mistake uh, is correcting to make sure that is not participating to the next mistake. Uh, this is done in parallel. So if you have one million neuron, and you have and you have uh, you have maybe well it does not happen, but let's say you have one hundred neuron making a mistake. Uh, they all correct the mistake in parallel in 16 clock cycle all together. So again, you are very welcome to uh, to download the neural car and to play with your kids uh, on that. So I think uh, th this gives you an idea of what is doable uh, with only hardware. Uh, today with the FPGA size, uh, we it, we actually I can on the I put I put uh, the equivalent of the NM500 on the uh, uh, Xilinx Skintex. 
And right now, I'm putting 13 euro on the Arduino Vidor uh, to have fun and, and to, uh, to be able to show my grandkids to recognize toys uh, with the Arduino Vidor. So it can uh, go on any FPGA. It's very easy. Thank you, Guy. Uh, we have a few minutes uh, for some questions, so let me go through them. Uh, as uh, before, as I said to, to the other speaker, please uh, find also some time uh, to reply to the others we will not cover. So the first is, uh, you should be proud, uh, Guy, because uh, there is uh, Hannibal Bastille that still have uh, a Curie board. So you may like it, uh, this, uh, this comment. Then a question is, what metrics do you use to evaluate the performance of your systems? Do you run tests based on standard data sets? Yeah, actually, uh, as I said, you know, in order to learn a, a new vectors, uh, you have the feeding time of the vector, or do you enter the vector? It takes one clock cycle per component, uh, and it goes to all the neurons at the same time. Uh, only the, what we call the uh, 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 committed neuron, which has already a content, and the ready-to-learn neuron, which is at the end of the chain. So this is one clock cycle per component. Uh, at the same time, it makes the L1 distance on this clock cycle. And then uh, after the learning, which is basically shrinking all the neurons which, has, uh, which are firing uh, inappropriately and uh, committing the category, take 16 clock cycle constant. It does not change. And uh, as I mentioned, we mainly using L1 distance. Uh, it's possible to use uh, L sub distance and also, we have a function, a KNN, where we can find one KNN versus many in a constant time. And uh, just uh, to, to also uh, answer more directly the question, when we say it's uh, many tera operation per second, we actually try to do the same thing, something in software with a very efficient risk processor. And uh, this is what it takes. Uh, actually, uh, to to make the same thing with an efficient DSP. Okay. Um, next uh, is uh, um, uh, there is a, a a person that would like to contact you uh, to pose more questions. So please, uh, you may want to share uh, your uh, contact uh, details. Uh, mm, there is another question about uh, uh, where to get the ma further material to learn more about your solution. So you may want also to provide more uh, uh, pointers uh, to, to get the documents uh, and whatever uh, you can make available. And the last is uh, if, uh, uh, the, if uh, a, uh, the source code of neural car uh, can be made available uh, uh, to people. Yes. Uh, okay. So in order to contact me, it's very easy. As you know, Danilo, I'm on LinkedIn. So it's very easy to contact me and uh, I will uh, very uh, easily accept the link with other person, you know. And uh, my, my, my email address is uh, guy at general-vision.com, so it's very easy. Uh, in terms of the NeuroCar source code, it's available, uh, obviously. Actually, we, we also made the, the source code of the previous chip uh, in Verilog uh, available uh, and uh, is, is, much, less, uh, is much, le much less efficient uh, than the last one. Uh, but still, uh, in terms of, uh, term of number of neurons, like if you want to put in a tiny FPGA with this source code, you still will be able to put uh, maybe uh, 20, 30 neurons uh, into a FPGA. Uh, so this, this is available. Uh, regarding the training, we have training material. We have given many time two days training uh, to the US military, to Singapore, to different places. So that's uh, very uh, easy. And uh, in terms of availability, the new chip will be on sale very soon, uh, next year, the 5500. And uh, as I said, the, the Curie uh, is still available from this uh, Chinese company, DF Robot. You know, uh, they, they still have some. 
So, and uh, we have a library called Curie Neurons, uh, which is uh, written both in C, or in Arduino actually, in Arduino and in Python. Uh, so same thing, it's possible to download that for free uh, on the generalvision.com uh, website. And uh, if you want to see also more application, we have a web page called generalvision.com slash VIP. And uh, there is much more information. And we say uh, VIP is no nothing confidential. It's just because we don't want to have too, too many questions. So, so we put it on the VIP uh, page, but it's mu much more information. Thank you so much, Guy. It was great uh, uh, to have your time and your uh, uh, expertise being represented uh, at uh, today's forum. Uh, appreciated uh, uh, very much. You are a very experienced people with a lot to say, uh, and you say the very important things. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, forum was uh, possible thanks uh, to the TinyML uh, Foundation support uh, and all uh, the uh, support from the strategic uh, customer, which are helping a lot and providing uh, resources to make sure that uh, this forum and other events and other, um, uh, other interesting uh, events will happen in, uh, in, uh, in the future. So just uh, to um, thanks also and list the executive uh, strategic partners, uh, ARM, Edge Impulse, Qualcomm Research, Sintiant, and the Platinum strategic partners, Deep Light, Clickatech, Reality AI, Renaissance, Sony Semiconductor, the Gold Strategic Partners, Analog Devices, PhotoHub, Microsoft, NXP, uh, Seed Studio, Sensimil, ST Microelectronics, Synaptics, ScienceSense, and all the silver, the silver strategic partners. Thanks again to stay with us uh, yesterday and today, and I hope uh, it was a valuable experience. Thanks and see you soon. Bye.